You know guys, it can be a little difficult sometimes coming up with a unique, fun intro for all these giga hauls, but what is for sure is I love doing these giga hauls and this one is no different. Let's get after it. All right, everyone, welcome back to the giga haul. This is part 25, a quarter of a century. It's crazy that in about two years, We've done 25 of these installments. I did start this in, I think, February of 2022. So yeah, two years just about. And it's all thanks to your guys' support. It really means the world to me when you like, comment, share, all those things. And keep it up if you want to see more of these. It's definitely one of, like I said, one of my most favorite series and videos to record on the channel. So let's get into it. I have a lot of stuff to get through and some of the best stuff that I've gotten. Like I'm really excited to dig into these boxes here. First off, we do have some new 2024 singles I just wanted to show you. I do have reviews of all these up on my channel, Cave Mater being the first one out of case D, but you know, it doesn't hurt to show them here again. So they get more exposure because they really are some of the best new releases over the last few months and probably the first like really good releases of the year. Ponchi Wipeout, not included in that, but he is a nice new carded variant. It's not a new Thailand variant, but it is a good sight to see Ponchi, at least the Cars 1 version, back in the mix. We also have Tractor Ghost, another one of my favorites. This guy just looks incredible. You guys have already seen the reviews on these, like I said, but I haven't reviewed them yet, so I am very excited to open these up. And the last of the singles is Lightning McQueen, Deputy Hazard with the slime here. Can't wait to examine his new expression there. It looks really cool. But yeah, those are some of the newest singles and hopefully they're hitting stores right about now. Now, you guys remember, or maybe not, but I did a video recently on the transportation ornament set from the Disney parks. There was a monorail, a jungle cruise boat, a bus, and a parking lot shuttle. Well, that got me thinking and kind of exploring the lore behind those and where the inspiration came from because there was no Cars branding on that ornament set. It's not like it said, well, this is our Disney Cars, Disney Parks collaboration. No, it didn't say anything along those lines. But there is media where it's rooted in. As you can see here on this keychain from Walt Disney World, you have... The Carified Monorail, that was one of the ornaments right there. And yeah, you also have McQueen and Mater. Mater with the goofy hat, McQueen with the Mickey ears that Mattel actually did as die cast. And so a lot of this stuff is really rooted in media and they did a lot of art to promote and kind of cross promote Cars Land and Cars 2 and all that good stuff, Cars Tunes. Unfortunately, the best we got were the diecast McQueen Mater. There was also the Pirate Mater, which they didn't really do any art of, and the ornament set. Unfortunately, they never did like a proper diecast monorail, which would be so cool. But I wanted to get this because it is kind of like a piece of Disney Cars history in terms of the lore. And a lot of it is really forlorn at this point in time. Like finding this pencil bag here, which is the best piece of lore, I'll tell you guys why in a second, was extremely difficult. Thankfully, Someone really close to me found it on eBay and I snatched it right up. But just searching for this is difficult because what do you call this? Is it a supply bag? Is it a pencil box? Like whatever it may be. And it's not like it says on there, this is for Disney Cars Land Transportation. Like whatever, you guys know what I'm saying. It's hard to look for this stuff. It's not like Tractor Ghost, which you could easily search up. But yeah, this is probably, like I just said, the best piece in terms of like rebuilding, kind of piecing all that lore together because it has all those characters on it. Basically everything you could have asked for from that ornament set. There are two monorails. This is the second one, different from the one we just saw on the keychain. It's a little bit more of a modern, like next gen monorail. On the other side, you have the original, the one that we just saw on the keychain and the one that they did as the ornament with Mater as Goofy there. So really cool that they did both. It actually took me a little bit to notice they were different. But this is where the money's at here, guys. This is honestly why I bought this because there aren't really too many good images of this item on the internet and therefore there aren't too many good images of these beautiful images. And it's literally like they're exclusive to this pencil bag, which is just a crazy, crazy thought. But yeah, you have the Congo Queen boat there, which is different from the ornament one that we got by quite a bit. This one's not from the Jungle Cruise, but kind of along the same idea. It does have the eyes up here in the hull along with the mouth. 
and you have the Mientia that we had seen there with or seen on the ornament with the Minnie Mouse ears. Luigi, the pin collector Luigi, as he's got a bunch of different pins on his visor. And Mater with a cool kind of safari hat in there. Really nice. They never did anything for the Mater or Luigi. But yeah, you could see all the copyrights that they had to do. Plymouth Superbird, who could that possibly be? Oh yeah, it's the king. Dad the king. He's got his 43 hat, which probably would be such a cool release if they did that. That would fly off the shelves. Not only is it a new version of the king, but he's got a Richard Petty 43 hat on. That's just so cool. And then a different version of Luigi there with the pins. And then you have that parking lot shuttle that we had taken a look at as an ornament, right? So it's kind of all getting pieced together. The only thing that this pencil bag does not feature is a bus. But we will take a look inside here, even though my lamp just went out. It really does not provide much on the interior here. The same images that we just saw are printed on these pencils. Yeah, I could tell like something's not right. The <laughs> screen was not quite as bright as it had been. And yeah, the lamp was dying. That makes sense, Mr. Docket. This is just so cool. And then this ruler actually features yet another character, and it's the pin collector Guido. You can see he's got some on his hat and on his forks there, which is just so neat that they put so much effort into developing these characters and all that when they didn't really use them for anything outside of pencil supplies and whatnot. So, yeah, this is such a cool piece. I don't know how much you guys really care about this, so we're going to move on here quickly, but I did want to show you everything it has to offer. The only thing missing was that marker right there, but, yeah, I mean, they all are imprinted with the car's decal on it, which is just so cool. Like, why don't they do stuff like this anymore, man? I don't know. All right, moving on to some actual physical cars, we have... The Neon Racer Plastic Pullback Lewis Hamilton. So if you guys remember in the last Giga Haul, I had the other three of this set, which was McQueen, Max, and I believe Raul Cerul. Okay, so now I needed the other two, and yeah, here they are. They are not on as good of cards or packages because they came from China and not Germany, but that's okay. These are other things that are extremely hard to search for and pretty much impossible to find, so I'll take what I can get. But yeah, Lewis Hamilton's looking pretty good up in there. Really liking how they did his wheels there. They really stand out. Lewis Hamilton. But yeah, not on a good card. It's really too bad they don't show like the other ones you can collect. But this is technically international packaging. So I understand why. And then to complete the set, as far as I know, is shoot to the Roki here. Like if they did... <clears throat> a Nigel Gearsley, I have no idea. I'm pretty sure they didn't, but if they did, then that's one I certainly don't have. And that's the only other neon racer that they could have done because they didn't do like Francesco, Rip, Carla, or Jeff, or any of the like Frosty, Vidley, Petro type characters. They did do Frosty actually, but that's kind of a different thing. And yeah, Shu actually looks awesome. He's like such a dark gunmetal gray. And I love how the red dragon's illuminated on him. Really nice, really cool for sure. And so, yeah, it's just nice to complete this set, even though they aren't on the best of cards. All right, guys. So I went to the Disney 100 Expo, the exposition, I guess I should say, in Chicago recently. It was great. You know, I wanted to take advantage of I knew when I saw <clears throat> that they were doing this that I wanted to go eventually. And it opened in Philadelphia, and then by luck, it opened in Chicago after that. It was the second United States city it opened at, which is fortunate because I live just outside Chicago. So I picked up this nice pin set. Just wanted to show you guys. You got Coco there. I'm not sure. Is that his name? <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Is his name Diego? You do have the Disney 100, the exhibition logo. There you have Tinkerbell. I'm not entirely sure of all these other characters. Obviously, Mickey Mouse there. This reminds me of like Maleficent here. This is like a monkey or a dog. Man, is that not Pluto? I don't know who that is. Kind of looks like a monkey based on the tail. You guys are probably screaming at me, but I'm sorry. I don't know. Here we have an Air Mini Racers 3-pack from Get Me Collectibles. 
If you need anything from Get Me Collectibles, check out the description below where you can find his eBay store and his email address if you want to ask him about something specifically or order a case or whatnot. So get on his email list, which is super helpful. Everyone always asks me, like, how do you know what's coming next? Like, how do you know what's new? Sign up for Get Me Collectibles email list. It's kind of as simple as that. And check out his eBay store because he's pretty much got it all. And yeah, was able to pick up this cool No Eyes Air for Ryan Inside Laney. Although it's a little bit more than No Eyes Air. He's just missing that entire piece. It's not just painted over in white like sometimes it is. Now, while I was at this expo, I picked up this cool Mickey Mouse figurine. Disney Showcase. This is done by an artist that does a lot of Disney sculpture or figure type things. I have a couple of his other pieces, one of them being a Disney Cars one. And it's actually, this is going to be messy. Oh my God, I hate these styrofoam pieces. Maybe if I grab it where it's taped. But yeah, I'm not sure if you guys have ever seen it. It's in some of my collection videos and other videos and whatnot. A red tractor. It's about like yay big and is fantastic. One of my favorite pieces in my collection and super underrated. And what's not underrated is how poorly this was packaged <laughs> and how difficult they make it. But yeah, this artist is fantastic. And oh my God, this is going to be an absolute pain in the ass without making a mess. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious, guys. We might have to take a sabbatical on this one and come back later. Nothing like a quick little cut to not only restore our lamp, but also to get Mickey out of the box. Man, he looks fantastic. And you can see the unique art style that this artist, his name being, really, I thought they would put it on this little tag. Oh, Jim Shore. Yeah. So he kind of does this pattern on the texture of his characters, the Kind of plaid pattern there on Mickey's ears and the unique swirls on his suit, his shorts, his shirt, I'm not sure, <laughs> and the base here. This is awesome. And it's nice and small, so it's easily stored or displayed wherever you really want it to be. So I can't wait to put this one up somewhere and just a nice little piece to commemorate the day. All right. Let's get into the depths of the giga hall already. You guys know we don't mess around here. I did say when I got this exact prototype in Giga Hall Part 24, I believe I said at least that I had another one coming. And yeah, it just kind of happened out that way that I ended up with two. Wasn't super intentional, but I'll take two. It's a nice prototype of Gail Boffer for sure. And spoiler alert, I will be doing a prototype prestige episode on this one. Not for a long time. It is recorded, but... <laughs> It probably won't come out. I think it's like episode 23 or 24. So yeah, it's definitely not due out for a while. And yeah, here's another one. Might trade that one away at some point. It's always good to have some trade fodder. All right. Speaking of prototypes, get used to it. We got a lot more in this video. Starting with one that I don't have any of yet. I believe this is, yeah, Jambalaya Chimichanga in a full red color. With the rubber tires? Yes. Wow. That's kind of crazy. I believe. Yeah, those are, yeah, those are definitely the rubber tires. You could see that they are completely separate from the wheels themselves and they're a little hardened, but back like when they were fresher, you could pull them off of the wheels. Won't be doing that. But yeah, this is a cool prototype. I don't have a prototype of Jambalaya yet. And yeah, I have a prototype of almost all of the Demolition Derby racers. Not fair game, but I don't think I have Superfly either, but I have a lot of them. And this one even has a number, 004 right there. If the light hits it just fine, you could see it. So it's really cool when you get an unpainted prototype like this with a code on it. It's like a double whammy. You not only got an engineering prototype, but also just like a very raw, primitive one. And yeah, just straight up red. <laughs> Good stuff. Reminds me of that Jonathan Shifko prototype I have that's colored very similarly to that. All right, guys, I got a ginormous box right here of a bunch of other prototypes. So we're just going to get in and, you know, grip it and rip it, as they say. All right, so here we go with Cruz Ramirez as Francis Beltline. A lot of these are going to be, what I just said, engineering prototypes with the codes on them. And they're almost completed, but they might have a few differences between what ended up being released. And this one, 
Primarily, I do believe there's a glossy version of Cruises Francis, but a lot of the ones that they've released have matte finishes, even when they did her from China. And you could see the 121 clearly there on her roof. Yeah, no date stamp or anything like that. Yeah, just really cool to have. One of the last ones I needed from the seller at least. He had a bunch of like the 2017 Cars 3 engineering prototypes. And this one was, I was kind of putting it off because, eh, it's okay, right? There's cooler ones to get. And that'll actually be super true here in a second for another one that I held off getting for a while. But, you know what, let's just skip to one. Actually, no, we'll, <laughs> we'll show you guys this one. All right, so you guys would think, well, Herb Kerbler, why would you be putting off getting such a cool next gen? Like, you like four-wheel drive, don't you, Mr. Docket? And you're right, I do, but you tell me where the code is on Herb Kerbler here. Where is the engineering code? Sometimes on the next gens, they're up here. Sometimes they're on the hood. Well, no, it is literally on the underside of his bumper, which is just a horrible spot to put it. I mean, obviously, Mattel is not thinking about like, oh my God, we could resell these. No, no. But yeah, in terms of like desirability as a prototype, this one's pretty low on the list because it's not even visible when you're you know, just sitting them down, right? You have to lift them up to see the code there. So yeah, another one that I held off getting because of that. And honestly, I only got this one because there was such a drought of like prototypes and canceled cars in December, like November, December. And then the floodgates just opened like crazy and there was a whole bunch. Now, call me crazy, but why do I feel like this wing is different from the one he ended up having? It just looks way wingier. I don't know, maybe I'm going crazy, but these engineering prototypes are known to have a few other slight tweaks from the finalized versions. I think his eyes might be a little bit bigger, but yeah, we'll definitely have to do a comparison at some point. But yeah, the wing just looks different to me, but I could be completely tweaking. <laughs> tweaking about a possible tweak. All right, here we have another 2017 Cars 3 release in, I always get this guy's name wrong. Let's call him today. Let's do high impact. You know, why not? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know his name. It's pile up or is it tailgate or is it fair game? I don't know. But yes, this one has writing along with a bunch of codes. It's got like some codes over here that are ineligible or what's the word? Yeah, <laughs> you can't read it. 201 is the main code though. But you can see 2017 520, so May 20th of 2017 is when they put this guy together. DXV28, that should be his product code, or DXV78. What did that say? Oh, it did say DXV78. It kind of looked like a 2. But yeah, you can see that that is the correct product code. There might be a few differences between this and the final version as well. I think with the eyes slightly. The eyes back here, which is so cool. I love this. Such a unique model. And kind of a forlorn demolition derby racer. You guys know what I'm saying? All right. No longer forlorn. Now, here is one of the most popular demolition derby racers. And this is one of my favorite prototypes of the day because... I mean, not only is he an engineering prototype, but he's got a major difference from the finalized version. His eyes are looking off to the right. And if you guys have seen some of the original stock images for Taco, they look like this. His eyes are looking off to the side. Now you can see that it's just the positioning of the eyes. The eyelids ended up being the same. They just centered the eyes a little bit more. I always like this expression, but seeing it in person, it does look a little off. Again, DXV39265, you'll see that the product codes match. But yeah, really cool. And I'm sure you could spot some other differences between this and the finalized release if we were to take a look. Now, Taco was one of the last Demolition Derby racers to be released with a glossy finish before they quickly switched them over to a matte finish. But yeah, obviously the prototype here is going to have a glossy finish because this was super early on to have that expression, which is just so cool. So glad I was able to get that one. It's definitely one of my favorites. Up next is none other than Florida Ramon from the Florida 500 
end of Cars 3 scene and race. Now, I don't know where the code is on this one. He's got, obviously, writing there on the roof. FLL33. Yep, that is his product code. I feel like someone showed me where his code was. I forgot. There it is, 274, chilling over here. Good stuff, love to see it. I'm not sure if he has any differences. Not really anything popping off to me right away, but that is kind of interesting. We're getting into 2018 with him. That was one of the first 2018 releases. So we're out of 2017, at least for now. And <laughs> we're going way back in time with this one. This is Blackout from Planes Fire and Rescue back in 2014. And yeah. This one has an engineering code as well, believe it or not, 210. One of the only, actually, I think this is the only Planes Fire and Rescue character with a code that I've ever seen. And the only ever second Planes character I think I've seen. I've seen, and I have Vanderbilt with a code on him. But that's obviously from the first Planes movie. Nothing from the second. But yeah, really cool to have you know just some diversity in the prototypes here with Blackout and his code. Good stuff. Kind of beat up, but I'm totally cool with that. You guys know how I roll. All right, let's keep on moving here. Here we have Rusty's Racing Center Lightning McQueen. Now, actually, whoa, whoa, I was not expecting that. I thought this was just regular Rusty's Racing Center McQueen, but it's the Fireball Beach version. Cool. And he's got some writing on him as well and a little sticker. Interesting. Most of these don't have stickers. His code is 050 up there. But yeah, that threw me for a curveball. I'll take it. Like, I'm not complaining, but I really had no idea that was going to be the Fireball Beach version. I would have bet my life that it wasn't. So, good thing I didn't. Another one within 2018 here is Tom W. So, it's good to know that some more prototypes, not just from 2017, are leaking out. But yeah. This guy looks like he's got a little bit of a more flat finish instead of the glossy when he ended up with 055. I feel like we've had a few in that kind of range today. 050 is the one we just had, 055, I guess just two. But yeah, Tom W, at least in the same case as Florida, Ramon, and Rich Mixon, who I think might be in this box if I'm a good boy. If I'm not naughty, maybe I'll be lucky and get a Rich Mixon engineering prototype. Who is also in that case, I believe, Metallic Cars 3 Lightning McQueen, the first scavenger hunt car they ever did. Not a chase, guys. Scavenger hunt cars are not chases. Now, this one has a few differences. The wheels are not painted darker red to match the metallic finish. They're just the standard red. He's got some writing and then a code. Lightning McQueen likes to have his codes right there on almost every version. It'll be right there. So 018 for him. Kind of looks weird with the brighter red wheels, but makes sense, right? It's just the prototype. Going back to 2017 for this one, going back to the pile-up case with Bubba Wheelhouse here. One of my favorites. Really wish that this one was one of the more primitive prototypes where his number was still 63, like Lee Revkins, the original Transberry Juice Racer, but alas, it's not. FGD65, sure enough, that's the product code. Like a proper, like a good boy, he's got his code, 215 up here, unlike Herb, who stuck it right there. We don't like that. Come on, Herb. Another one that has a flatter looking finish than what he ended up having. And I feel like the overall paint coloring is a little bit different as well, which is cool. The more differences, the merrier for me. Looks like I was a good boy. Here we have Rich Mixon. Going back to that 2018 case. All right. He was another good next gen. Even better. Putting it up front. 159. I like it. Man, these are some dirty cars for sure. These guys have probably seen a lot. No writing on this one though. No. Yeah. Obviously, Rich Mixon, one of the fan favorite next gens. And obviously, <laughs> almost all the next gens are fan favorites. But him especially. Definitely more so than this one. We're going way back to one of the first Cars 3 releases now. And Tim Treadless, another one that has a very matte, flat finish. 
207 DXV 401 there. 2016, November 23rd. That's awesome. That's exactly when the Cars 3 trailer came out just about as well. And they were working on the diecast. They knew. They had all the answers. And we were just speculating about <laughs> all sorts of stuff. I remember. That was such a great time doing all those speculation videos. Cars 3. Leading up to the movie, man. That was such a great time in my life. And just on the YouTube platform here. And in terms of the community as well. Unparalleled. Not saying you know it's worse now. But it's just different now. Here we have Patty. Back to the pile-up case, bubble wheelhouse, you have 097. That one is really engraved in there, really channeled in. Lots of writing. DXV76, DXV76, 2017, 520. Is that the same date that we saw on pile-up here? It is. That's pretty cool. That's pretty sweet. That means these were made on the same day and maybe yoinked. By the same naughty employee, how dare you? Thank you very much for doing that. All right, I think I only have two more in this box, and then we're going to have to cut. And I'll have to see you guys in, well, you guys will only be gone for a couple seconds, and then I'll be back. But for me, I have to wait until I get more boxes in to continue this giga haul, because I want it to be giga. Can't just be half an hour. Sheldon Shifter from 2018 here. This one definitely has a little bit of a different coloring. And the hunt for the code continues. Where is it, guys? Where is it? Oh, all right. 017 right up front here. Appreciate that, Sheldon. Herb, like, why you got to be like that? That looks different to me, the way that's positioned on his wing there. Cold engine relief. That just looks different to me. I'll have to look. But yeah, Herb, why you got to be that way and stick it under your bumper? That's just kind of weird. All right, here we have Ponchi Wipeout from Cars 3. So going back to one of the original Cars 3 releases. With the black eyelids, nonetheless, and the black tires and wheels, not the yellow ones. It's kind of an ugly car. Like, I don't know why they didn't make this pure white, but they kind of made it like a creamy beige 203, there's the code, DXV68, lots of writing, it looks like 2016, December 2nd was when this one was made, really cool, oh, I don't, oh there's the product code, so, yep, it does match, and I guess I said 68, and that is 58, good stuff guys, good stuff, alright, so let me know in the comments out of those was your favorite, but we'll be back in a millisecond. All right, I'm back, and it actually hasn't been as long as I thought it would be. I have a few things here, and I just could not wait any longer to share these with someone. I have some just incredible, stunning cars, some of which I've wanted for years, some I've wanted for over a decade. So let's just get right into it with these two loose customs here from Cars Venturas. I have never gotten a custom from him before, and I saw that he did some of the Elves from Mater Saves Christmas a few years ago, including Clutch Kringle. And he was really busy, wasn't able to make any for me. Lo and behold, he finds some time, right? Now Clutch Kringle's already out, unfortunately. So didn't get that one, but I did get these green ones here. Now Luigi obviously is not quite as accurate to the book as the next one I'm about to show you, but still really cool. The paint finish that he used here, this like really smooth, Kind of Zamac metallic green. It's beautiful. Not sure what he used for the hat, but it's sturdy. It looks great. Got elf license plates. And yeah, I will do a video on these eventually. Probably wait till Christmas time again. But maybe if I wait that long, Mattel will do this. But this is definitely the best one. He's got a phenomenal expression here. And yeah, if you couldn't tell, this is the Professor Z model that he removed the monocle from and yeah, made into an elf that is extremely accurate to the book, almost identical, which is what I love so much about it. Really, really impressed with these customs. But yeah, finally was able to get my hands on these. Like the expression on this is just so elf-esque. Like it's exactly what I would imagine an elf to look like. So great customs from him, really excited to review those. But yeah, if I do wait till like October, who knows? Mattel might surprise us again with another Alpha release. Really wouldn't be surprised at all after they just did Clutch Kringle. 
All right, actually, here we have some stuff from Astro Smokey, my good YouTuber buddy and collector's link. Does a lot of great content down in Australia. And Misty Motocrass is actually kind of common there, at least she was. She was not released here in the United States, except I guess now in Case J. Case J is kind of somewhat being found at Target stores in the U.S. I haven't found it yet, but I wanted to make sure I got a couple of Missies to keep in the package. We know what happened from her 2017 release. She became uber, uber rare. So I wanted to pick up a couple extras here since I opened one of the ones I had. But yeah, he was nice enough to sell me a couple of those. All right, let's move on. These are some factory customs, I believe, in this little sack here, man. Sometimes the way they ship these things makes me cringe a little bit. These were on sale for like $2 each, so I just bought them. A lot of them are just extras and kind of random ones. Here we have another Bubba Wheelhouse. I am going to do a factory custom next-gen video at some point. In fact, it might already be uploaded by the time you're seeing Giga Hall Part 25. So I just wanted to have a couple extras. And yeah, this is one of the ones that is quite similar to the real deal. But yeah, most definitely a factory custom. Although this one doesn't say like children's toy car. Doesn't have any Mattel markings though, so that's an easy giveaway. I love that they have Mattel's address down here, the product code that Mattel uses, but it doesn't say made by Mattel or whatever. What is this one? I got some weird ones here. Here's one I don't already have. It's actually kind of a nice finish on this one. Rusty's Racing Center Lightning McQueen. Like it's got a really smooth, shiny paint job. And you can see the eyes are a little bit different from the actual release. They appear to have spelled. Nope, they actually got it right. It's just weird text up there for sure. And yeah, the decal's a little messed up there at the bottom. But yeah, that's what you're getting yourself into with these factory customs. The quality is not always great. Look at a little gold spec up there. But yeah, I'm totally cool with it. Like I just got these kind of for funsies. As I said, they were super cheap. They're <laughs> children's toy car. No, it's not. It's a collectible. Jesus. Oh, yes. See, this one I was hoping would have a different expression. Like the picture showed him with a different expression. But lo and behold, oh my God, look at that gnarly chip. Oh, that is disgusting. Don't love that. But again, they were only $2 after all. Really smooth finish. You know what? This is going to be the guy I take to Arizona with me. If you guys remember last year, I went to Arizona, I took a Lightning McQueen with, and we had a fun time out there in the desert, you know? Of course, you gotta watch that short to know what I'm talking about. I posted it to my channel. Maybe I'll do a full video this time. The short wasn't as successful as I hoped it would be. But yeah, a nice finish on this one. Look at the axles are even painted red. You can see in the center of the hubcap there, the axle is red. Red-tipped axle variant of Lightning McQueen, but yeah. Would be really cool aside from that chip, but that probably honestly happened during transit because these are all just thrown in here together. Even though they're in their own bubble wrapped baggies individually, they still are going to hit each other and that impact, you know, there are some Newtons of force that are going to cause some damage, surely. I wouldn't be surprised if we see another chip on one of these, but here we have Jim Reverick, one of the most popular Factory Custom Next Gen's right now just because he is so rare from Mattel going for almost $100. Does seem like they more so use the Tomica decals though for this just based on the look of them and how they kind of have like a flat matte but also kind of metallic feel and look to them. Yeah, they did a good job with this one. Like <laughs> if it were me and I was like, I ain't spending $100 for the real one, I would be more than okay with a factory custom if it looks that good and if it comes in you know relatively good condition and god they put these labels <laughs> i'm about to tear in all these bags here here we have a little tractor cow or a cow tractor literally <laughs> painted to the theme to the theme how about painted to look exactly like a cow let's just talk in layman's terms mr docket but yeah Oh, yep, see there's a chip on his side view mirror there on both sides. Ooh, yeah, this one definitely caught some damage for sure. Yeah, that's just what's going to happen with some of these. I really don't care all that much. I don't think I'm going to make a stink about it. Sometimes I'll make a stink about it, but 
on AliExpress, it's a little bit harder to make us think about it just because of the way that they run things over there. And the sellers speak really poor English. I'm not faulting them. I mean, I don't know much Mandarin at all, Mandarin, Chinese, whatever. But yeah, I mean, like on eBay, most of the sellers have like a decent understanding of English, I would say. Over there on AliExpress, they really don't know at all. But yeah, this is actually a really cool matte finished tractor. Another giant chip. What the hell on the side view mirror? That one kind of bothers me. But those side view mirrors are in very like vulnerable spots. So yeah, those got clipped. His poor little ears, my poor little tractor friend. But yeah, really cool. I like the matte finish a lot on this one with a kind of sad looking expression. But yeah, that is all for the little factory custom sack. Let's move on to this box here from Canada. Oh my goodness, guys. Pretty excited about these, even though I really have no idea what they are. So, yes, <laughs> I have no words. Okay, there's a lot of lore here. So buckle up, get your popcorn. Now, if you guys remember, over a year ago, I got this prototype Fillmore in. As you can see, it's on a very similar package to what we just got. It's showing an image of the diecast Fillmore and not the actual animation of him. The diecast himself is a little bit different using a different expression. The wheels are a little different, but he does have the same decal that he actually has ended up released with. However, Pick Remember Fillmore was never released as a single in the Porto Corsa line. And on the back here, you can kind of see semi-pixelated versions of the artwork. Like they aren't super clear. They aren't as clear as they are on the actual release. But you know, everything kind of checks out. Everything is spelled properly. It looks pretty legit. Because these do kind of float the line. Like there's a chance that they aren't prototypes and they are knockoffs. Now I <laughs> really do think they're prototypes. This one here. I would say is a little closer to the factory or the yeah little factory custom knockoff whatever you want to call it line for a few factors but these are very similar as you can see at first glance you probably think they're the same but if you get into it they are actually extremely different first off this version of Fillmore uses a very unique set of decals that only prototype stock images sport. It is the World Grand Prix American logo that McQueen and Jeff Corvette have. And then a weird version of Lightning McQueen's bolt that it's literally like Lightning McQueen's bolt without any decals and then flipped horizontally. Like I said, these decals have been used on stock images straight from Mattel. Prototype stock images like Sarge, Pick Remember Sarge or whatever has those decals in a stock image. So... If this was a knockoff, I mean, where did they get those decals, right? Now, the font here on the Fillmore name tag is a little sketch. It's like this one's even a little sketch as well, but this one is super sketch. Like, it's not the right font. That one actually is the right font. It just is kind of formatted awkwardly. You can see here that the eyes, it you know, looks pretty legit. I mean, it's a little different from what we got on this other Fillmore. On the back, you got kind of the same exact thing going on here that we just saw. I would say that the images look a little bit clearer, actually. I'm going to just say they're prototypes. It makes me sleep better at night. Like, I feel happier when I go to bed. But, hey, I mean, there's a chance that these are something entirely different. We'll never know. They're super strange, you know what I mean? And the fact that it's so similar to this, but also has some integral differences, just kind of ups the ante and confuses me even more. So yeah, there is that. There are a few more in here, so let's have a blast. Let's not knock anything over though, because I kind of have a lot going on in the room here. So here we have a Mater. And looky here, he's got the exact same decals we were just looking at, plus the actual one he has in the movie. Now the font looks much better on this one. You do have the animation of Mater. And the eyes are a little different for sure. You can also see that his front wheel is just completely unpainted up there. It's black. I wish I had the cojones to open one of these so we could kind of take a look at them loose. But yeah, I won't be doing that. These are nicely tight in the package. But yeah, there is that. There was another version of Mater that I got with that other Fillmore just over a year ago. And super similar again. However... I know we can't fully see it because the name tag is in the way, but this Mater does not have those added decals that we were looking at. It does not 
have the American flag World Grand Prix logo or the bolts, trust me. It might have the 95 logo, it probably does. But the expression on this Mater is also a little bit different. You can see it almost kind of takes on like the Precision Series expression. Super strange, guys. Again, I really have no idea what these deals are. <sighs> Doesn't really matter. Again, I'm just going to tell myself they're nice, cute little prototypes and yeah, call it a day. It is interesting to see these characters with these additional decals. I mean, they kind of look cool. Like They kind of look like they could be you know, used in the movie. They could have been used in the movie. Here's a brand new one that I didn't already have a similar version of. Of course, the other one I had was Femic Missile. And so I didn't have a Lane McQueen like this. And so we're going to have a good time examining this. The biggest difference you'll see right off the bat are the tires and the wheels. There's no light year text on them. And yeah, they're just entirely different. This front one's not fully painted like the back one is. And he also has a new expression here. Also, also, McQueen would have had a mouth play at this point in time in 2011. He would not have been a unibody like this one clearly is. And yeah, you can see that these are riveted and all that. Let's see what the base, let's see if I could read anything. Looks like it says Disney Pixar. And then it says Made in China at the bottom. So no mention of Mattel. Man, who knows what these things are? You guys let me know what you think in the comments below or if you've ever encountered one of these because they kind of seem to be all over the place. Like I think I know somebody in Europe who's got them. I got these from Canada. They're obviously in the US in certain places as well. China is where they originated from. But at the end of the day, if they are truly factory customs or knockoffs, whichever, doesn't matter to me. I still would have bought them. They still add value to my collection. They weren't that expensive, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm also going to call them prototypes because it makes me feel happier. And I also do draw a line between factory customs and these knockoffs just because knockoffs tend to be packaged. They tend to have a little bit more nebulousness to them because they can also pass for prototypes. And with the factory customs, like <laughs> Moo Moo Cow Tractor here is never going to pass for a prototype. There's no uncertainty with that. Like we know what factory customs are at this point. There are laws to them. Whereas with these, it's kind of like the wild west. But let's move on to the headline attraction, the blockbuster of Giga Hall part 25. The reason why, actually no, there are a lot of reasons why you should watch this video, but this is a humongous one. And it is the rarest retail release of all time. El Matador. Now, I just want to give a shout out to Tommy from Shea Heights, Newfoundland. Hopefully, I pronounced all that correctly, but he gave me a great deal on this up in Canada, and it's something that I've been on the lookout for since it was released in 2010. I do have a loose version of this that is a little beat up, but at the end of the day, and I keep saying that phrase, but I really always want one in the package. It's such a novelty item. It's one of those holy grail pieces that it's not going to go in storage. It's going to go on display somewhere in my collection. It's just a piece of history in the Cars Mattel universe, whatever you want to call it. Like I said, rarest retail release of all time. You might ask, how did that come to be, Mr. Docket? Well, in 2010, this was toward the end of the Cars Tune run before you know Cars 2 came about and Mattel shifted their focus. They obviously canceled a whole lot of Cars 2 cars and regular Cars 1 cars. This was so very much so nearly canceled. Like literally it was probably like a couple days away from getting the chopping block before it went into production. I'm not even kidding with that. And so therefore not many of them were made and the ones that were made were not released in the United States or distributed anywhere in the US. I believe most of them went to either Canada or Europe. And because it's a deluxe, there's also less availability as it is. Like we know deluxes aren't as widely available. Well, they're canceled now, but when they were existing, they were a lot less available than your typical single. So even if a single is only released internationally, like let's say Sadiq or Kristoff, they are still going to be easily and more obtainable than international only deluxes like Brian Parks Motors, like Stu Scatter Shields. Now, what is the difference between El Mayador and Stu Scatter Shields? Or what was the other one I mentioned? Taco Truck Mayor is also in there. Taya Deco Dura, his first release. Well, 
This is a Cars tune, so it's yet another subline. It's a subline of a subline. <laughs> Those are even less scarce, or even more scarce, but less distributed and less widely available. And all those factors just kind of bred a perfect storm and contributed to this being the rarest retail release of all time. No, it's not Bubba. No, it's not even Race Damaged Mood Springs. Heck, Race Damaged Mood Springs was released in the United States. My mom found one in a store at Target five miles away from me. So yeah, that whole Race Damaged Mood Springs thing has a lot more to do with the popularity of that character than actual availability and distribution. This one here, extremely popular for sure. I don't think quite as popular as Race Damaged Mood Springs, but yeah, I mean, you combine the popularity with that and then you add the elusivity on top of it and that just kind of blows it up in popularity as well. I did do a Forlorn Favorites episode on him a couple years ago now. It's probably actually been two or three years because he is kind of forgotten about. Like everyone will tell you, oh yeah, Race Damaged Mood Springs is the rarest car ever outside of convention releases or exclusives. Nope, it is for sure El Matador. The other thing that muddles it with him is that there's that plastic version from the playset that they did that was released in the US, but that's also quite rare. You know what else muddles it is the Shake and Go version of El Matador and the Disney Store version of El Matador and the Tonica version of El Matador, but you remove all of that, which you should because it has nothing to do with this. The Mattel El Matador is the rarest retail release of all time, and to be able to finally get my hands on one is really special to me, so I want to really emphasize huge shout out to Tommy from Shea Heights, Newfoundland. All right, guys, that is all I have for you for this installment in the Giga Hall. Let me know in the comments below, have you found anything lately? Obviously, I haven't found much, but I've ordered a fair amount. Probably need to take a break. My wallet, my virtual wallet's probably in pain a little bit here. But yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite Giga Halls. I kind of say that like every time now, but somehow like each episode one-ups the last one. So it's just been a great <laughs> series, a season of scores. Let me know what you've scored lately or what you plan to if you haven't gotten anything recently. That's totally okay too. All right, guys. As always, appreciate your support. Bye now. Okay.